Start of Chapter 3 Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the paraclete. To the sincere seekers of truth, it is obvious that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the promised paraclete or comforter, alternatively called helper, advocate, counselor, etc. of the prophecies of Jesus in the Gospel of St. John. There are millions of Christians, men and women like our good lady at the Cairo airport, who are hungry for this simple straightforward message, but alas, we can only weep with Jesus for our utter ineptitude. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the workers are few. Holy Bible, Matthew, chapter 9, verse 37. Language of Jesus In the Holy Quran, God Almighty puts the name Ahmad, which is another name for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the mouth of Jesus. The Christian controversialist, Bible thumper, hot gospel that flippantly scoffs at the suggestion. The Christian missionary does not deny that Jesus did make a prophecy about someone coming after him, but Ahmad to him seems too far-fetched. The most commonly accepted name by Christendom is Comforter. It does not really matter. Comforter or any other equivalent term will do. We will settle for Comforter as used in the most popular Bible translation, the King James Version. Ask your adversary, your disputant, whether Jesus spoke the English language. Most definitely not, any Christian will say. If you are sharing this with an Arab Christian, then you can ask him whether his Lord used the word Mu'azzi. Surely not, because Arabic was not his language. Did Jesus prophesy Umtokozisi, Comforter in Zulu, or Truster from the Afrikaans Bible? The answer again is a definite no. The Christians are rightfully boasting that they now have translated the complete Bible into hundreds of different languages, and the New Testament, in which this prophecy abounds, into more than 2,000 different languages and dialects. So the Christian genius has invented more than 2,000 different names in 2,000 different languages for this one candidate, Comforter. Numa, Ghost or Spirit The Church Fathers had developed a sickness by translating names of people, for which they had no right to do. For example, like Esau to Jesus, Messiah to Christ, Cephas to Peter, and so on. The closest one can ever get to the original utterance of Jesus in the Christian scriptures is the Greek word parakletos, which also has to be rejected because the Master did not speak Greek. But let's not be difficult for the purpose of this discussion and accept the Greek word parakletos and its English equivalent comforter. Ask any learned Christian man as to who the comforter is you will unmistakably hear, the Comforter is the Holy Ghost, from John 14, 26. This sentence is only part of verse 26. We will deal with the verse fully in due course, but first we must educate the Christian mind with regards to this misnomer, Holy Ghost, Pneuma, is the Greek root word for spirit. There is no separate word for ghost in the Greek manuscripts of the New Testament, and the Christians now boast 24,000 different manuscripts in their possession, of which no two are identical. The editors of the KJV, the King James Version, alternatively called AV, the Authorized Version, and the Douay, the Roman Catholic Version of the Bibles, give preferences to the word ghost instead of the word spirit when translating Numa. The revisers of the RSV, Revised Standard Version, the most up-to-date version of the Bible are going back, as claimed, to the most ancient manuscripts. These revisers, described as 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, who courageously replaced the shady word ghost with the word spirit. Hence, from now on, you will read in all modern translations the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. However, the Christian crusaders and the televangelists stubbornly cling to the spooky ghostly past. They will not opt for the newer versions. It's better fishing with the old bait, the KJV and the RCV, Roman Catholic version.
with the new change in spirit, the verse under scrutiny will read, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Holy Bible, John chapter 14, verse 26 you do not have to be a Bible scholar of any caliber to sense that the expression, which is the Holy Spirit, is actually an interpolation. It ought to be in parentheses, in brackets, like my words have been interpolated in the quotation, that is, emphasis added. Although the editors of the RSV have expunged dozens of interpolations from their boasted revised standard version, they have retained this jarring phrase which contradicts other explicit predictions of Jesus on the subject of the Comforter itself. Holy Spirit is Holy Prophet It may be noted that no biblical scholar of any standing has ever equated the Paracletos of John in the original Greek with the Holy Ghost. Now we can say with one breath that if the Comforter is the Holy Spirit, then that Holy Spirit is the Holy Prophet. As Muslims, we acknowledge that every true prophet of God is holy and without sin. But whenever the expression, the holy prophet, is used among Muslims, it is universally accepted as referring to the holy prophet Muhammad So even if we accept the above incongruous saying, the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, as gospel truth, even then this prophecy will fit Muhammad like a glove without any stretching of its meaning. The same John, who is supposed to have authored the gospel bearing his name, also penned three more epistles which are also part of the Christian Bible. Amazingly, he has used the same terminology of Holy Spirit for Holy Prophet. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Holy Bible 1 John chapter 4 verse 1 You can observe that the word spirit is used here synonymously with the prophet. A true spirit is a true prophet and a false spirit is a false prophet. But for the so-called born-again Christians who see only with the eyes of emotion, I recommend that they lay their hands on C.I. Schofield's authorized King James Version of the Bible, who, with an editorial committee of nine deities adding their notes and comments, when they come to the first word spirit in the above verse, they should give a notation to compare it with Matthew 7.15, which confirms that false prophets are false spirits. So according to St. John, the Holy Spirit is the Holy Prophet, and the Holy Prophet is Muhammad wasallam, the Messenger of God. A valid test But St. John does not leave us in the air, guessing the true from the false. He gives us an acid test for recognizing the true prophet. He says, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Holy Bible, 1 John, chapter 4, verse 2. According to John's own interpretation, in verse 1 above the word spirit is synonymous with the word prophet. So verse 2, spirit of God would mean prophet of God, and every spirit would stand for every prophet. You have a right to know as to what the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is spoken by name no less than 25 times in the Holy Quran. He is honored as Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus the son of Mary, as salihin the righteous, Kalimatullah, word of God, Ruhullah, spirit of God, Masihullah, Christ of God. Behold, the angels said, O Mary, God giveth thee glad tidings of a word from him. His name will be Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, held in honor in this world and the hereafter, and of the company of those nearest to God. Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse 45. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the other. The Comforter in 1426 can never be the Holy Ghost because Jesus had already explained 
and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Holy Bible, John chapter 14, verse 16. The emphasis here is on the word another, a different one, an additional one, but of the same kind, yet distinctly different from the first. Who is then the first comforter? The Christian world is unanimous that in this case of the speaker himself, Jesus Christ is the first comforter, then the other, the one to follow must be of like nature, subject to the same conditions of hunger, thirst, fatigue, sorrow and death. But this promised comforter was to abide with you forever. No one lives forever. Jesus was mortal, so must the coming comforter also be mortal. No son of man can ever be immortal. Every soul shall have a taste of death. Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse 185. Alive in their teachings. The soul does not really die, but when it separates from the body at the time of the death of the body, the soul will get a taste of death. But our comforter was to abide, continue, endure forever. All comforters abide with us forever. Moses is here with us today in his teachings. Jesus is here with us today in his teachings and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam also is here with us in his teachings today. This is not my novel idea trying to justify the preposterous. I say this with conviction and on the authority of Jesus Christ himself. In Luke chapter 16, Jesus tells us the story of the rich man, poor man. At death, both find themselves at opposite ends one in heaven and the other in hell. The rich man dives simmering in hell, cries to Father Abraham to send the beggar Lazarus to assuage his thirst. But when every plea fails, he, as a last favor, requests that Father Abraham send the beggar back to earth to warn his living brothers against their impending doom if they heeded not the warnings of God. But Abraham said, If they, though still alive on earth, won't listen to Moses and the prophets. They won't listen even though someone rises from the dead to warn them. Holy Bible, Luke chapter 16, verse 31. Jesus uttered the above fact centuries after the demise of the prophets of Israel like Jeremiah, Hosea, Zechariah, etc. and over 1300 years after Moses. The Pharisees at the time of Jesus and we today can still listen to Moses and the prophets for they are still alive and with us here today in their teachings. You of the time. It is said that the Comforter was promised to the immediate disciples of Jesus and not to a people 600 years later. And he, God, shall give you another Comforter that he may abide with you forever. Holy Bible, John chapter 14, verse 16. Surprisingly, the Christian sees no difficulty in justifying the fulfillment of prophecies since the world began. And after over a millennium, when Peter in his second sermon to the Jews reminds them, For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. Holy Bible, Acts chapter 3 Verse 22 All these, ye, you and yours, are from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18 when Moses addressed his people and not the Jews at the time of Peter, 1300 years later. The Gospel writers have put the same compromising words in the mouth of their master which are begging for fulfillment for 2000 years. I think just one example will suffice. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily most assuredly, I, Jesus, say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man, Jesus, be come. Holy Bible, Matthew, chapter 10, verse 23. Scanning the Clouds These early followers of the Messiah forever ran forlornly fleeing persecution. They ran from one city to another in Israel, scanning every dark cloud for the descent of Jesus in his second coming. The missionaries see no anomaly in their millennium of unfulfilled prophecies. 
God Almighty did not keep them waiting for even a quarter of the time for the advent of the Paracletos, the Comforter or Ahmad, which is another name for the Praised One. Let them show gratitude to God by accepting the last and final messenger of God, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Advent of Comforter Conditional The Comforter is definitely not the Holy Ghost because the coming of the Comforter was conditional whereas that of the Holy Ghost was not as we observe in the prophecy. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go for, if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Holy Bible, John chapter 16, verse 7. If I don't go, he won't come. But if I go, I will send him. There are numerous instances in the Holy Bible about the coming and going of the Holy Ghost before the birth and departure of Messiah. Do yourself a favor. Please verify these references in your Bible. B.C. Before Christ's birth. 1. And he, John the Baptist, shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. Holy Bible, Luke chapter 1, verse 15. Number 2. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Holy Bible, Luke chapter 1, verse 41. Number 3. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost. Holy Bible, Luke chapter 1, verse 67. AC, after Christ's birth. Number 4. And the Holy Ghost was upon him, Simeon. Holy Bible, Luke chapter 2, Verse 26. Number 5. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, Jesus. Holy Bible, Luke, chapter 3, verse 22. From the above quotations, before and after the birth of Jesus, one cannot help admiring Saint Luke, who appears to be a specialist on the Holy Ghost. We may well ask the Christians after the descent of the dove. With whose help did Jesus, peace be upon him, perform his many miracles, if not with the help of the Holy Ghost? Let the Master himself tell us, when accused by his own people, the Jews, that he was working in league with Beelzebub, the chief of the devils, to work his miracles. Jesus rhetorically questions them. How can Satan cast out Satan? The Jews imputed that the spirit of holiness, the spirit of God, which was helping him, was devilish. This was treason of the highest order, so he gives them a dire warning. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, it shall never be forgiven. Holy Bible, Matthew, chapter 12, verse 31. The Holy Ghost is none other than what Matthew himself has described in three verses before quoting the Master. But if I, Jesus, cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come upon you. Holy Bible, Matthew, Chapter 12, verse 28. Compare the same statement by another gospel writer. But if I, Jesus, by the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. Holy Bible, Luke, chapter 11, verse 20. You do not have to be a Bible scholar to understand that the expressions A, finger of God, B, spirit of God, and C, Holy Ghost, are all synonymous phrases. So the Holy Ghost was helping Jesus in his ministry. The Holy Ghost was also helping his disciples on their missions of preaching and healing. If there is still any doubt in your minds about the workings of the Holy Ghost, then please read. Empty Promise As my Father hath sent me, even so I send you, the disciples of Jesus. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Holy Bible, John, chapter 20, verse 21 to 22. This was surely no empty promise. The disciples must have received the gift of the Holy Ghost. So if the Holy Ghost was with 1. John the Baptist, 2. Elizabeth, 3. Zacharias, 4. Simeon, 5. Jesus, and 6. The disciples of Jesus then all this makes nonsense of the saying that if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. Therefore the Comforter is not the Holy Ghost. 
The verse under discussion is John 16, 7. I remember the thrill and joy I got out of it when quoting it in Arabic to the Coptic Christian lady in the land of the pharaohs. The pleasure is immense when expounding biblical verses in the standard native language of a country or locality. I have done it in a dozen different vernaculars. Won't you master the above verse in a language or two of your choice for the good of Islam? Afrikaans, a unique language. Of all the language in which I have mastered the verse in questions, I have derived the greatest excitement and benefit from Afrikaans. It is a language of the ruling race in South Africa. It is the youngest of the world's languages. The language is unique. In fact, every language is unique. But Afrikaans is in a class of its own. It also happens to be the mother tongue of half the Muslim population of South Africa who were brought here as prisoners of war and enslaved by the Christians. That is simply by force of circumstances. For their immediate benefit and for your information, I reproduce the verse here. Mar ek se jul de warhid. Dit is vir jul vurdelik dit ek vigan. Want is ek nie vigan nie. Sal de truster. Nie na jul kom nie. Mar is ek vigan. Sal ek hom na jul stur. Johannes chapter 16 verse 7 Believe it or not, it is the genius of this language that it uses four negatives nie, 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 nie to prove a positive. The departure of Jesus is an absolute imperative for the coming of the truester, the comforter to come. This verse in the language has opened many doors for me other than religious and it locks the door against the idea of the comforter which is the Holy Ghost. John chapter 14 verse 26 Disciples not fit We now come to the four most comprehensive and decisive verses in John chapter 16 to solve the enigma of the successor to Christ. For Jesus did truly say, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Holy Bible, John chapter 16 verse 12 we will later tie up the phrase many things from the above verse with guide you into all truth from the verse that follows when discussing it. For now, let us discuss the phrase you cannot bear them now. The truth of this statement ye cannot bear them now is repeated monotonously throughout the pages of the New Testament. And he, Jesus, saith unto them, the disciples, why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 8, verse 26. And Jesus said unto him, Peter, O thou of little faith. Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 14, verse 31. He, Jesus said unto them, the disciples, O ye of little faith, why reason among yourselves? Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 16, verse 8. And he, Jesus said unto them, his disciples, Where is your faith? Holy Bible. Luke chapter 8 verse 25 We must bear in mind that this is not the indictment of Jesus on the indecisiveness of the Jews, but on his very own elect. He stoops down to the level of little children to make things plain to his disciples, but he is compelled to burst out in frustration. And Jesus said, are ye even yet without understanding? Holy Bible, Matthew chapter 15, verse 16. And when he was provoked to breaking point, he rails against his chosen ones. O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Holy Bible, Luke chapter 9, verse 41. Own family thought him mad. If Jesus would have been a Japanese instead of a Jew, he would happily have committed that honorable Harakiri suicide. Sadly, he was the most unfortunate of God's messengers. His family disbelieved him, for neither did his Jesus brethren believe in him. John chapter 7 verse 5 In fact, they went to the extent of wanting to apprehend him, believing that he was mad. And when his relatives heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him, Jesus, for they said, he is beside himself. Holy Bible, Mark chapter 3, verse 21. Who were these friends and relatives of Jesus who had concern for this sanity? 
Let Reverend J. R. Demelo, M.A., in his one-volume Bible commentary, tell us on page 726. He says, from V31, just 10 verses following the above quotation, they appear to have been his mother and brethren. His family said he is beside himself, meaning that he is not right in his head. The scribes said he is possessed by the devil himself. It is not, however, implied at all that his family was in sympathy with the scribes, the learned men of the Jews, their apprehension being simply that his mind was unsettled and that he needed to be put under restraint. Jesus rejected by his nation. That was the verdict of the close relations of Jesus. What then was the response of his own nation, the Jews, after all his beautiful preachings and mighty miracle workings? His disciple puts it very mildly. He came unto his own, the Jews, and his own received him, Jesus, not. Holy Bible, John chapter 1, verse 11 Actually, his own mocked him, scorned him, and vehemently rejected him, to the extent of making an attempt to crucify him, despite 2,000 years of Christian persecutions and pogroms, and now their overweening love and infatuation for them, so as to salve their own conscience, the Jews as a people and as a whole can never accept Jesus as their saviour, their deliverer, their God, simply because of their one sound judgment, that no Jew can ever accept another Jew as a God. It is only in Islam that the Jews, the Christians and the Muslims can find accommodation, all believing in Jesus Christ for what he really was, one of the mightiest messengers of God, and not as God or his son. Disciples deserted him. What was the response of the chosen twelve, of his own mother and brethren? Mark chapter 3 verse 34, as he called them. I will allow Professor Momory to describe it in his own inimitable words. His immediate disciples were always misunderstanding him and his work, wanting him to call down fire from heaven, wanting him to declare himself king of the Jews, wanting to sit on his right hand and on his left hand in his kingdom, wanting him to show them the Father, to make God visible to their bodily eyes, wanting him to do, and wanting to do themselves, anything and everything that was incompatible with his great plan. This was how they treated him until the end, and when that came, they all forsook him and fled. Quoted from Sayyid Amir Ali in his The Spirit of Islam, page 31. It was most unfortunate that Jesus Christ had no real choice in selecting his disciples. They let him down as no other group of devotees had ever let down their prophet before. It was no fault of the master. He bewailed his plight. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Matthew chapter 26 verse 41 Truly, this is not the clay out of which a new Adam could be made. He passes on that responsibility to his successor, whom he calls here the Spirit of Truth, that is the Prophet of Truth, the Prophet of Righteousness. Spirit and Prophet Synonymous Howbeit when he, the Spirit of Truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Holy Bible, John, chapter 16, verse 13 It has already been established that biblically, the word spirit is used synonymously for prophet by the same author in 1 John chapter 4 verse 1. Hence the spirit of truth would be the prophet of truth, a prophet in whom truth is personified. He had walked through life so honorably and industriously that he had won for himself even from his pagan fellow countrymen the noble designation of a sadiq, the truthful one, and al-amin, the honest, the upright, the trustworthy, the man of faith who never broke his word, his life, his personality, his teachings are the veritable proof of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam being the embodiment of truth, al-Amin, the spirit of truth. End of chapter 3